In the previous video, we discussed about the glycolysis where the glucose is being metabolized to pyruvate. And we understood that this is being carried out in two different phases that is, um, the preparatory phase and the payoff phase. So, we understood about this preparatory phase where uh, glucose has been cleaved into two different molecules that is, glycerdehyde, three phosphate, and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Glucose, which is a 6 carbon compound, has been com converted to 3 uh, carbon compound. So, these two intermediates, it's basically a 3 carbon compound. So, whatever glycerdehyde 3 phosphate has formed, it uh, results in the, it right away enters into the glycolysis pathway. But this dihydroxyacetone phosphate is not suitable for the uh, glycolysis. So, it has to undergo one more step of isomerization step here. So, this is carried out by the triose phosphate isomerase. So, whatever dihydroxyacetone phosphate formed in the previous step, it gets converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So, the next step is the formation of 1,3-dysphosphoglycerate from this GTP. So, here uh, you have the oxidation and phosphorylation taking place here. So, oxidation means here you see NAD is going to act as the electron carrier. So, this is going to be reduced. So this compound is be oxidized, so it removes as uh, it, it expels the hydrogen, and this hydrogen will be used for the reduction of this NAD plus. And a phosphorylation occurs by the inorganic phosphate. Generally, for phosphorylation, we use ATP as the donor, but here the inorganic phosphate is going to serve as the uh, electron donor. So this uh, phosphate uh, first, this aldehyde group which is present here. Okay, this is going to be oxidized and the hydrogen will be replaced by a phosphate. Okay, so they go they both go hand in hand here. So this result in the formation of uh, one three bisphosphoglycerate. Okay, so the phosphorylation takes place in the uh, first position. Right. So this is one three bisphosphoglycerate. So the next step is going to be the formation of three phosphoglycerate, where the um, uh, formation of first step ATP is going to take place. Okay, so the ATP comes from the substrate uh, on the phosphoglycerate itself, where the phosphate will be removed from the first position. Okay, the uh, phosphorylation which takes place in the earlier step, it has been reversed now. Okay, so uh, it again forms uh, as the now it is being uh, converted to COO group and this phosphate has been removed. Okay, so this results in the formation of 3 phosphoglycerate. So the next step is the formation of 2 phosphoglycerate and this is a reversible reaction. So this will be carried out by the enzyme nutrase. Okay, so uh, here nothing hap what happens actually is there is a transfer in the uh, position of this phosphate. So from the third position it moves to the second position and the hydrogen which was present here that moves back to the uh, third position. Okay, so uh, this is the 2 phosphoglycerate. And the next step is uh, formation of phosphoenol pyruvate. This is catalyzed by the enzyme. Uh, oh, sorry, phosphoenol pyruvate catalyzed by the enzyme enolase. So this is a hydrolytic step where the uh, H2O will be removed um, from this H2O and uh, for balancing the carbon bond, we need four number of carbon bonds. For carbon valency is four. Okay, so here we have uh, introduced a double bond. Okay, so this is phosphoenol pyruvate. The last step is the formation of pyruvate, and this is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. So where this ATP is removed here, and it gets converted to ATP by reaction with ADP, and finally you have the formation of uh, pyruvate. Okay, so the bond has been balanced by introducing a double bond over here, and uh, this results in the formation of two molecules of pyruvate. Okay, so this is the payoff. So now we will see about what is happening in each step with block by 3. So the first step is the reaction 1, where the hexokinase is going to act as the donor, sorry, acceptor of the uh, acceptor. Uh, sorry, hexokinase is the enzyme and hexose is going to serve as the acceptor of the phosphate. Okay, so phosphate is derived from the ATP and for the ATP to be active, it has to be coupled with magnesium. Okay, so Mg2 plus is going to act as the carrier here and as a complex only it is going to function. 
Okay, so as soon as this binding of substrate uh, hexose with the hexokinase takes place, there is some conformational changes which is happening in the enzyme and that brings the uh, ATP molecules towards it. Okay, so some proximity effort, effect is taking place here, which helps in the catalysis. Okay, and uh, then we have this kinase enzyme which is going to help in the phosphorylation. This comes under the uh, group of enzymes called transferase. Okay, so uh, phosphorylation is a very important step because once a molecule is being phosphorylated, it should it will not be able to move out of the cytosol. We know that this glycolysis is taking place in the cytosol of the cell. So once these like glucose molecules have been phosphorylated, it is not possible for them to escape the cytosol due to the lack of the transporters. Okay, so it has to enter the glycolysis and the pathway will continue till the pyruvate is formed. Okay, so the next step is uh, here it's an isomerization which is catalyzed by the enzyme uh, phosphohexose isomerase. So glucose is being converted to uh, fructose 6-phosphate. So this is a very important step because uh, once the uh, substrate has entered this particular step, there is no turning back. Okay, so glycolysis will continue uh, somehow once this uh, step is complete. Okay, and here we see that the aldose has been converted to a ketose. Okay, the next step is the uh, formation of uh, fructose 2 6 phosphate, and this is carried out by the enzyme phosphofructokinase. Okay, and this is a very important regulator in the, of this glycolysis pathway. And uh, there is one another enzyme called phosphofructokinase 2. Okay, so uh, that is that happens uh, that step is being carried out in gluconeogenesis which helps in the formation of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate okay so this is again a allosteric inhibitor for this particular step okay and the next one is the uh, cleavage reaction which is carried out by the enzyme aldolase which results uh, in the formation of two compounds uh, this radical B phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate Okay, so we can understand that the 6 carbon compound glucose has been converted to two number of uh, 3 carbon containing compounds here. Okay, and the distaldehyde 3 phosphate which has formed, it right away enters into the payoff phase. But the dihydroxy acetone phosphate, it has to undergo one more additional step. Okay, so it is reversibly converted to distaldehyde 3 phosphate by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase in the next step. Okay, so now we move on to the next stage that is the payoff phase. So here in the payoff phase, uh, this distraldehyde 3 phosphate it is being converted to 1,3 bisphosphate bisphosphobistrate. Okay, so this is uh, carried out by the enzyme distraldehyde 3 phosphate, uh, sorry, dehydrogenase. Okay, and uh, here also we can see that phosphorylation also happens along with this reaction. So here the ph uh, phosphate donor is going to be the inorganic phosphate. And the acceptor for this particular uh, electron is NAD plus, and it's like kind of like a coupled reaction. Okay, uh, the step six and the step seven they are going to be like coupled reaction because the ATP is going to be generated in the next step. Okay, so whatever ATP is being utilized there in the previous step, it should be uh, convert, uh, it will be produced in this phase. And uh, another important thing that is happening here is. NAD plus is reduced here, right? And this NAD plus has to be replenished. So that is where this one is coupled with the lactate formation, okay, which happens in the anaerobic uh, conditions of glycolysis. Okay, so next we have the formation of the first ATP molecule, and this is happening by the phosphorylation reaction, where one free bisphosphoglycerate is converted to three phosphoglycerate. Okay, and this uh, phosphoglycerate. Uh, this is catalyzed by the enzyme uh, phosphoglycerate kinase and it, it will also play a vital role in gluconeogenesis. Okay, and the next step is uh, for, catalyzed by the enzyme mutase and we already know this mutase is a transferase enzyme which is just going to transfer the functional group from one position to the next position. So here the uh, phosphate molecule will be uh, moved from the position 3 to the position 2. Okay, so now it will result in the formation of 2 phosphoglycerate. And the next step is a dehydration step where the phosphoglycerate will be converted to phosphoenol pyrene. Okay, again, this is a reversible reaction. And finally, we have the production of pyruvate 
from the molecule PEP. Okay, and also the phosphate, whichever has been removed, that results in the formation of a ADP. Sorry, ATP. Okay, so that is the uh, second step where ATP molecule has been produced. And again, here the step requires uh, magnesium two plus ion for com to complete this particular step. Okay, so here if you see, this is the overall summary of this entire glycolysis reaction. We have the uh, so we have the glucose over here, okay, which undergoes a series of reaction. First, we have the phosphorylases, okay. So uh, here, if you see, this is a preparatory phase where we have two molecules of ATP which has been utilized, and it results in the formation of uh, intermediate compounds like uh, fructose one six bisphosphate, and which has been finally is, uh, converted to uh, the stradiated three phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate. By the enzyme aldolase. Okay, so uh, here uh, this is a reversible reaction. It results in the formation of crystalldehyde three phosphate to dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Okay, and now this crystalldehyde three phosphate it enters the next phase of glycolysis, that is the payoff phase. So here uh, the two important events that are happening is the uh, reduction of NAD plus and the formation of ATP. Okay, so uh, we have two molecules of ATP produced in the first uh, step or sorry, second step of payoff phase, and then the last step of uh, phosphoenol pyruvate getting converted to pyruvate, we have one more ATP getting produced. Uh, sorry, uh, one more ATP in the sense, one uh, for one glucose, we have two molecules of ATP. So, totally, we have four ATP which is getting generated. So, here overall, if you see, this is a 10 reaction step. Uh, in which one molecule of six carbon compound that is glucose it is getting converted to uh, two carbon uh, sorry two number of three carbon compound pyruvate and here this glucose is being oxidized finally okay and we have the generation of two molecules of NADH which is being generated and in the first step we have two ATPs which has been utilized and at the payoff phase four ATPs has been generated totally. Okay. One glucose molecule is going to produce uh, four ATPs finally, but the net value okay, of ATP which is produced is going to be only two because uh, the four minus two, which gives us only two. So, here if you see, this is the overall uh, balance sheet. Uh, here, uh, one molecule of glucose, right? one molecule of glucose which is reacting with. Two ATPs has been consumed here, and the seventh step, sixth step we have two ATP, two inorganic phosphate which has been utilized, and then uh, we have two NAD plus which has been um, used and which is going to be reduced to NADH. Okay, and then four ADP also has been utilized. So this ADP it results in the formation of ATP. Okay, so what happens here in that last it gives uh, glucose has been converted to two molecules of pyruvate. And uh, two ATP that has been uh, sorry, uh, four ADP has converted itself to uh, four ATP, and two ATP has been utilized, and that results in the formation of two ADP molecule. And two NAD plus that has been uh, present, it is results in the formation of two NADH. Okay, and as a result of this phosphoenol pyruvate, we have two H2O molecule is also has been produced. So, uh, the net value of ATP that is produced is going to be uh, 2 ATPs, okay, 4 minus 2, it, it's only 2. Okay, so what happens as a result of this glycolysis, glucose has been oxidized and NAD plus has been reduced and ADP has been phosphorylated to ATP. Okay, so that is what is happening in aerobic condition. So next we move on to the inorganic phase. Okay, so when inorganic during inorganic phase, there is a one more additional step here. So this pyruvate it is going to be uh, catalyzed by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. Okay, so if you see here, this is lactate dehydrogenase. Okay, and this results in the formation of lactate. Okay, so uh, this NAD. Uh, what actually happens is this NADH which was formed earlier in the st earlier steps of glycolysis in the seventh, sixth phase, uh, sixth stage, okay, that uh, that will be utilized here, okay. So the NADH will be uh, again oxidized to NAD plus, and this NAD plus which should be formed that will again enter into glycolysis 
and it will help in the uh, formation of 3 uh, 1 3 bisphosphobisrate okay so this uh, kind of anaerobic condition it exists inside our system when we are doing vigorous activities okay when during exercise okay or extreme energy utilization activity by the muscles there is some kind of anaerobic uh, system in which well, which is present inside our cell inside our body uh, and that kind of condition is called anoxia anoxia or anorexia okay so the, during this hypoxic conditions okay uh, this pyruvate will be converted to lactate and the main agenda of this thing is to replenish this nad plus okay nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide it has to be replenished so that it will be again utilized for the uh, next step of glycolysis okay so this lactate is produced again uh, it's going to be a bit toxic because it will reduce the ph of the system and it results in a condition called acidosis okay and also this lactate dehydrogenase is a very important marker for uh, myocardial infection during heart attack and all this uh, lactate dehydrogenase uh, and its isoforms there are five different forms of lactate uh, then concentration of this enzyme will be more during these kind of conditions okay and um, uh, so this glucose conversion uh, which is con uh, which gets converted to lactate in home muscle and once this lactate is formed okay it is con going to convert itself back to glucose okay so this kind of cycle it is called as cori cycle so this happens in the liver okay this cori cycle it takes place in the liver okay so here if you see uh, this thing is clear okay so we have the study head 3 phosphate okay and uh, this has to be uh, phosphorylated as well as oxidized okay so uh, the uh, phosphate comes from the inorganic phosphate and uh, because of oxidation this aldehyde it gets converted to acid and the hydrogen which has been removed it results in the uh, reduction of this nad plus okay so now this nad H it comes along the cell plus glycolysis and during anaerobic uh, respiration it gets converted, pyruvate gets converted to lactate by the enzyme LDH or lactate dehydrogenase and that is when this NADH is getting uh, replenished or it gets converted to NAD plus. Okay, so this pyruvate again it has to enter the citric acid cycle or it is blocked during this anaerobic condition and there is one another kind of situation when uh, in microorganisms it ha this happens very predominantly like yeast and uh, fungi and other bacteria and all uh, during anaerobic condition they don't produce lactate but instead it produces ethanol okay so here if you can see we have the formation of pyruvate okay the glycolysis it ends with pyruvate production and now you have the enzyme called pyruvate decarboxylase. Okay, so decarboxylase it removes the CO2 molecule. So the CO2 here is C, and we want more. And one more uh, oxygen is taken from here from the acid group, and that results in the formation of uh, reduction of this particular compound pyruvate. And here acid is converted to aldehyde now, so it results in the formation of acetaldehyde. And then we have the enzyme for alcohol dehydrogenase, uh, which is going to be a reversible reaction. Okay, so this acetaldehyde it converts this particular alcohol. Uh, acetaldehyde will be converted to ethanol. Okay, so this uh, aldehyde group is being uh, reduced. Okay, uh, so that's what is happening here, followed by a decarboxylation as well. So decarboxylation uh, followed by reduction. Okay, so that's what is happening in this microorganisms. Okay, so with this we come to the end of this uh, glycolysis. So we can see that glucose has been metabolized. It has been uh, in a ten-step reaction. It has formed pyruvate, and this pyruvate, uh, when the condition is anaerobic in the muscle, uh, it enters the uh, pathway where it is catabolized by the uh, lactate dehydrogenase to form lactate okay so this condition is called acidosis and uh, this lactate can again be converted to glucose in the liver and that is called cori cycle okay
okay and uh, it also helps in the replenishment of this nab plus which can be utilized as the electron carrier for the rest of the glycolysis cycle okay and then in microorganisms we have this pyruvate which has been catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase to form acetaldehyde and this acetaldehyde will be converted to ethanol okay so this is the overall or overview of this glycolysis i hope you have understood better so please keep practicing writing the structures uh, with this we come to the end of